images are reconstructed in a similar fashion to CT. The main difference is in how the signal is detected. In CT, we project an external beam through tissue and measure attenuation. In PET, we detect the signal from an injected radioactive isotope in the tissue. Here we see a typical PET image that has been overlaid on a grey CT image. Note that the resolution is substantially less than that of CT or MRI. This lower resolution is largely due to the smaller amount of information and lower signal to noise that is available during acquisition. In order to understand PET reconstruction, we first need to review the process by which the PET signal is acquired. In a PET system, the subject is placed in the scanner. The scanner's detector is called a scintillator ring and can detect extremely low signals. In PET's case, this signal consists of a single positron. In order to detect this, each detector element is quite large. Recent advances in technology have enabled smaller and smaller elements in this array, which in turn leads to better resolution. The use of cascade photodiodes to replace the scintillator ring also increases the speed of acquisition. That will, in turn, increase resolution. In PET imaging, a radio tracer is then injected, and once this binds with the target tissue, a collision event occurs, represented here as a star. This results in two positrons being emitted in exactly opposite directions to each other at the speed of light. Given their velocity, irrespective of their location in the object, these two positrons will hit the detected ring at essentially the same time. When this happens, the scanner records what is called a coincidence event. As more of the PET tracer binds at a location, more collision events are then recorded as time progresses. The time scale over which this happens is dependent upon the tracer binding potential and the abundance of what is being bound, but typically is between 6 and 12 nanoseconds. Note that not all collision events will be recorded, only those that occur in the same plane as the scintillator ring. This is another factor that reduces the amount of signal that is available in a PET scanner. Note that some modern scanners can detect some of the out-of-plane coincidence events, but only a small percentage more. If we now look at the case of where multiple simultaneous tracer bindings are occurring, we can see that there will be multiple overlapping coincidence events. While the events themselves are occurring simultaneously, the detection of the coincidence events will still occur independently, given the immense speed of the positrons. The raw output data from the scanner is then a series of points that represent coincidence events. Each event is represented as two points, through which a line can be drawn. This is called a line of response, or LOR. From the data, we don't know where along the LOR the event occurred. More modern detectors with a higher time resolution can give an approximation of where an event occurred, within an accuracy of about 100 millimetres. These systems are called time of flight or TOF detectors and operate on a time scale of approximately 3 nanoseconds. We can now visualise the reconstruction process by placing a probabilistic line between each of the two points from the coincidence event raw data. As we add more and more of these events, the result is a final probabilistic map of the source of the events. We haven't displayed the exact technical details of how this occurs as there are many differing techniques. The most typically used technique involves first sorting the LORs into similar directions, grouping them into what are called sinograms and then reconstructing them as per CT back projection. Other techniques use statistical techniques such as expectation maximization to generate an inverse solution. What is similar between all these techniques is that the end result is a probabilistic map of the source of the coincidence events.